My name is Beth Hiley here for Working Geek at Comic Con at Home, and I'm joined by Tom Wetzel from Cosmos. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Beth. How are you doing? Well, excellent. I feel as though since we are about to talk about Targi, that maybe we could both just have it over our shoulder like that, since you have it part of your backdrop. Oh, um, I do. They also you have do. Spots. I know. Oh, well, now, well, now we're just in duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously we're here to talk about uh, the very well-known game, a two-player game, Targi, has uh, had an expansion in Germany for quite a while, and the English-speaking audience is delighted that you guys have brought this now over to the U.S. Yeah, and we are too. So let's assume that people watching this have an idea of how to play Targi already. So you could probably just reference saying this is the same as the base game. Right. And if people aren't familiar with Targi, gee, there might be a website they could go visit where they could learn how to play. There you go. Um, so what is the specifically, what is the expansion going to bring to us? So uh, the expansion, I, I'm very excited about this because well, I mean, my personal opinion about expansions, I want them to uh, just give me more of what I love. And that's exactly what Targi does. It doesn't change the game drastically. It just gives you a little bit more of this and a little bit more of this. And then it adds just a little bit of this. It, it's it's a, a fantastic expansion. Um, there's... I mean, you can see here, I've got out here all of the cards that you're going to get. I can't hold up all of the tokens, but then we also have the a figure here, um, and it's set up. You can see the components there. Um, love this game. It's kind of a, a little, I mean, I want to call it a hidden gem because although I think it's very popular, everyone still feels like it's their little, like, sweetheart because uh, it, <laughs> it's only recently become very readily available. Uh, uh, so, um, how how much do you want me to get into the details? It's, uh, I'll let you kind of direct me. Yeah, well, I think um, that where I would like to begin is the fact that the uh, border that you set up around the edge of the board is unique here in this expansion. So, what you're doing on your turn is still the same. You're placing your three guys. You're choosing two cards that cre are created from the intersection of those guys. But uh, the cards are on the outside. Now, those powers are different, correct? They are, they are, and and it's important because um, there's there's a couple just like little changes that are added to the game. That, well, they seem minor at first, but if you've played the game a million times like me, uh, you'll notice there's a, a huge difference. So we're adding these water tokens, and water tokens act as uh, kind of like a wild card, but they're also incorporated into some of the cards. Now. The uh, the border cards, they're kind of like your stationary worker placement areas where you can put one of your tribal members to acquire either a resource or trade resources or get more cards. All these things are available and, and these cards have been enhanced from the base game to incorporate the new um, player token and also the, the new resources. And of course, um, there's a, a sand dune over there um which is also important to mention I, I feel like one of the things i love about this game is there's so much to talk about there's so many things that are happening but once you get playing it feels as easy as checkers yeah um, yeah i agree yeah so uh well, the border cards they are switched out um most of them there's a couple that stay the same like uh the the pepper and the salt and the date those resources those don't need to be uh, exchanged because uh, those stay the same. Um, but the water token uh, in the lower left-hand side there, that's that's a new card. And then all of the, uh, yeah, almost all of the border cards have been replaced. Now we also have a new figurine. And I will admit, I actually don't know what it does. So I'm going to leave it. We got a new purple wooden marker. Okay, uh, great. So the, the one at the, the top, the, the gray one, that's kind of like the robber, right? He He's going to travel clockwise around the border, and he kind of blights whichever card he is on. So whatever card he's on, you can't, as um, a Targi a tribal member, uh, you can't go on that card. Whereas the Targia, which is the purple new one that's been added to the game, the Targia 
she actually gives you a benefit. So when you go on there, on, on the same space as her, you're going to get the benefit of going on that card, and you're going to get a bonus. You're going to get a water token, or there's a couple other actions that you can uh, take. It's it's really, oh, it's great because um, you you think like, I, I love it when there's a game like this that uh, when you've played it a few times, you can see the layers of, of decision making kind of increasing slowly, but it's it's very uh, important. So when you're landing on that character, uh, you, you can get a water token or you can uh, sacrifice a uh, resource to try and draw a card that you need. And at the end of the game, when you're going for like, you know, you're swinging for the fence, like sometimes that's exactly what you want is you want that resource that that she might be able to give you. Now, you had briefly mentioned that there's also a new deck called the Sand Dunes, which we have over on the right-hand side. Um, and that is also unique to the expansion here. Yeah. So the Sand Dune cards are super powerful. Um, and you'd have to take one of your tribal members and move it over to there. And it has to be super powerful because um, what what it's taking away from you. Now, if, if you'll remember, like on the regular Targi game, you're placing your, your, your members on the border cards and the cross section of those border cards, it's gonna give you access to either another resource or another um, tribe card. If you neglect to put one of your tribal markers on the border, you're gonna miss out on one of those cross sections. And that's what the sand dune cards are trying to entice you to do. They're trying to entice mm -hmm. you, get, they're, they're trying to say like, you don't need that uh, cross section and you don't need that resource because we're going to give you something super super great and and so that's what they do cool thing about that is uh those cards um they don't actually so there's three of them out there right now and they're going to only refresh uh every one um what is it third after after every third round so yeah so they're they're not you're not getting new ones all the time, which makes your decisions pretty right. interesting. Yeah, it's, it's super important to pay attention to, to those. Now, I wanted to mention to people who are looking at the, this layout and how beautiful this game looks. Now, we did, we you, you and I have had a little project together in the last year. We made a Geek Up Bit set for uh, Targi the base game, which is what you guys are seeing here. Um, so if you're like, oh, those are cool metal pieces. Um, that's an add-on that BGG did, actually. There we go. I love those. Those <laughs> are great. They really are. <laughs> um, and I wanted to, you know, I, I, I've, I've spilled the beans online, but I'm happy to report now, anyone who's watching this feed as well, that yes, we are indeed doing a Geek Up set for Targi expansion. You got to wait, though, because I'm only now in the modeling process. I haven't even put the order in yet. Um, but the reason we're, we need, I needed to call in my modeler again is the, the um, modeler who did the amazing piece, the, the first player marker, which the Mickey and Lincoln have out on their feed. I'm holding mine up as well. Um, I've hired him again to do the action tokens. Um, so they are also going to be made out of metal, which seems like a great intro to say, what are the action tokens? Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, so uh, in in the base game, your uh, the tribal cards that you can acquire, uh, which you add to your tableau, and uh, become kind, they can become kind of like an engine building in in, the, in a way. Um, most of those are going to be either immediate or end of the game actions, right? Whereas in the expansion, the the version that you're seeing here now, some of those tribal cards uh, that you're adding to your tableau, uh, they're going to give you one use actions. It's kind of a free action, but you only get to use it once. So those tri those action tokens, the little uh, triangle ones, triangle. Uh, if, you, if you get one of those tribal cards, you put that action token on the tribal card, and then once you've used it, you, you kind of like spend it, right? Um, it's, it's a great way to give someone uh, a powerful move without, without it becoming too powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and I, I think, and I think it's a nice, concise way of showing, demonstrating that you've you've triggered that once off and still giving you that strategic control of deciding when you want that to happen. Yeah, it's 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 really uh, a, a great game, and, and I 
when I first played the expansion, uh, I was just impressed with how thought out it was. And that's one of the ways that I, I feel like it brought more to the game, but it didn't complicate it. Like that's an easy concept, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, well, and it's something I, I'm with you. Like I, I tend to be pretty picky about my expansions because I don't necessarily want there to be more stuff and more decisions. Right. I maybe more want, that want there to be different decisions. And I, I think this hit that balance. I think, well, I feel like I should point out that uh, I'm such a huge fan of Targi, the, the regular game. And for, for those of you who have not played the regular game, uh, this is going to sound counterintuitive as a publisher, but I think you should not go out and buy the expansion just yet. Buy the regular game first, because there's hours and hours of gameplay, uh, countless hours of gameplay in just the base game, which is beautiful and elegant and wonderful. And, and you'll fall in love with it. And then pretty soon you'll realize you've played it a hundred times, right? At, at which point you should probably buy the expansion because it's going to give you an additional hundreds and countless hours of, of gameplay. And, and it doesn't feel bogged down. Like when I, when I take this game out and I'm, I'm introducing it to people, like I don't feel like I'm teaching them a game and then another game. I feel like I'm teaching them a game. Like it's not, it's not uh, an expansion that I feel like is, is going to double the amount of explanation. Yeah. Well, and since we have quite a bit of time left in this half hour, why don't we just kind of walk people through what a turn would look like, just in case maybe if people watching this aren't familiar with the, <clears throat> excuse me, familiar with the base game, uh, they just kind of get an idea of how, really how simple it is to get into this game. We'll just use the expansion cards that are already out here. But uh, yeah, just so people can get an idea of what it feels like to play if they're not familiar. And then those who have played the base game before can get an idea of maybe the powers that some of those expansion cards will bring. That's a great idea, absolutely. So I'm nominating you to be the blue player, Tom, uh, right. because I know you know the board really well. Now all those exterior cards look, look very nicely have a number on them. It makes it easier to set the game up. So I figure you can probably just tell Lincoln and Nikki what number you want to place your blue guys on, and then I will be the white guys, and I can tell them where I want to place uh, oh, my white guys. You have to be here. So am I going first? Do you want me to go first? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna nominate you go because I will fully admit I, I I myself don't have the expansion, so I'm gonna mostly be placing blind, but you know, not gonna worry about what I'm choosing too much. So you choose thoughtfully, I will choose randomly. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go on uh, the border card number three with the salt. Perfect. And. Now I will place one around the edge and I think I will go with the dates, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to, I'm seeing, I'm trying to see if I should block you on something. You know what? I'm going to block you. I'm going to take, oh no. I'll go on card number two, the other dates. Okay, I'm going to go on the water hole, which I believe is 14. Oh, no, I can't do that. That's right across from me. Never mind. Um, which, for those of you who haven't played, you can't go right across from yourself. You kind of like Sudoku. You always have to be in a different row or column. Uh, put me on the... Um, on the big bag of pepper that should be 16, 15, 14, 15. Yes, that one. All right. And I'm going to go on the, is it card 15, the salt? And I need to do one more and I can't go where Tom is and I can't cross myself. So let's do... Let's do the one to the right of my pepper guy. I can't actually read it from here. So, oh, no, that's across from you. I can't do that. No, nope, no. Nope, yeah, I want to go there, but I can't. Uh, yeah, there, I, I'm happy to give the assist from Lincoln. <laughs> uh, the Let's do one up. Do the traitor. Oh, no, I can't go across. That's right. You're right. You're right. All right. The times one pepper. Oh, yeah. Or there is fine, too. I'm happy to. You guys can actually see the card, so I'll defer to you. Okay, there we go. 
All right. So the, now, I love this Tom, part of the game because you can just take uh, the, so there's a bunch of things that we're now able to do, actions that we can do, and we can kind of fulfill them in any order that we want. I love that, the freedom to do whatever you want. And Lincoln and Nikki are nicely putting out little uh, marker discs that show. So we're finding the two cards in that center block of nine that are formed at the intersection of our three guys. And it just helps. It's a nice little visual. I love that. Like, that's so useful because now since we get to resolve in whatever order we want, you can sit and stare at the two that you have and make sure you're staring at the right two. <laughs> that's a good point. It's, it's fine. Well, you... Um, you are yeah, the so first you know what? Player, I'm going to so. take all of my border resources first. So that's a two salt and a, a date. And I should be able to buy that water hole now. Because that's, is that two salts and a, and a date? Yeah. I, and then, of course, it is. of course, I want the gold, the gold piece from the other uh, cross section <laughs> there. I've played this game a few times. I don't waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. My choices would be either a water token or a victory. I assume that's a single victory point uh, from what I can see overhead. Or buying a tent that costs me pepper salt, water, water, or one of or pepper, salt, gold. So I think I would like to investigate getting a water marker. So I think for my center card there, I'm going to choose the water marker instead of the uh, victory point. Water is good. Yep, right there. So I chose the water. And then my card right below that, I am indeed going to buy that tent. But since I don't have enough water, because I have, uh, oh, I do have enough water. Oh, yeah, I think I would buy that with the uh, pepper, salt, water, water. I do really like that having the uh, choice of, having the choice of, uh, not only would I have the choice of maybe which one of those two payments I wanted, but then I could have also substituted the water for some of those things, um, which also, just, I mean, man, like the game is still so simple, but in that one choice for that one card, I had about five options and how I paid for it, which is sort of breaking my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't take long, right? No, no. And now it would be my, but that, that was around. Now it would be my turn to go. Now, does that gray right. guy that I, I forget what his name is, is he the, the, the robber? He moves, right. he moves one so to he... uh, clockwise. Clockwise. And the, the purple figure, Targia, goes uh, one step in the counterclockwise. Sorry. There we go. Oh, and yeah, so I forgot to I forgot to do. Um, oh man, I'm doing a horrible job. Uh, I was on the space with the salt uh, because I was there with the Targia figure. I also get a reward. Oh. I get a resource of my choice. Uh, so I'll take pepper. Sure. Does water Sorry, count as a back. resource? That's a that's a papa. <laughs> would what would water be available as a resource for you to choose, or is it no? The so water thing? is actually not a resource, which which means so at the end of your turn you can only have ten resources. You can also have ten water bits or pieces, right? Those don't count as the same thing. I like thematically though that like you you imagine you could only carry so much water like that that very intuitively made sense from a real world standpoint as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now I would love, because I know that there are a couple cards also that are, have some really unique features and I'm wondering if, and you'll have to help me. I don't remember if they're in the blue deck or the burgundy deck, but uh, blue probably the ones that have the parentheses markers on them. Cause that something mm -hmm. is also really unique to these, to this game or yeah. to this expansion, I should say. Uh, so yes, yes, usually, Lincoln is pointing to one. There uh, we go. Perfect. Perfect example. All right. So this uh, tribe card, you have two options for for buying it. You can either pay one gold and get the two victory points at the end of the game, the two things that are outside of the parentheses, 
That's your first option. Your second option is to do both what's in the parentheses and outside. So you would pay three pepper and one gold. You would at that point get the two victory points plus two additional victory points. So you're essentially paying three pepper for two victory points, which is a really good deal if, if you have it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a very cool uh, addition to the game as well. Now the and th expansion and there's a was like that, yeah. Yeah, now the expansion was also designed by Andreas as well, correct? Correct. And he's he's great. And he's on Board Game Geek all the time. I get messages from him when uh, people like comment the, on the game. They're saying how much they love it or something like that. He's he's very responsive. He's he's great to deal with. Uh, also, just a genuine nice guy. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I was telling this story right before we, right before we went live. I was. Uh, working the register at the little pop-up store that we create when we're at a convention in person. And we had the Targi Geek Up set for sale. And a guy comes up to me and he's like, I'm so, he had three of them. And he's like, I'm so excited. I was like, that's great. Are you a fan of the game? And he's like, well, actually I'm the designer. Cause of course I knew his name, but I never <laughs> didn't know what he looked like. <laughs> right, right, right. And I, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love your game. He's like, oh my gosh, I love your pieces. <laughs> We had this great little moment and I was able to gift him a set and he was all like, no, 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 don't do that. I said, come on, you made the game, man. The least you can do is get a set for free. Like, come on. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I know we yeah. don't have a lot of time, but I, I was hoping if, if you don't mind, since we're talking about a Cosmos two player game that I could just like really quick plug uh, another two player game that I didn't get yes. it to Lincoln in time. Oh, yes, yes. No, you've got a good eight, nine minutes, my friend. You've got plenty of time to plug. Well, uh, thank you so much. I love Targi and I love the expansion. Uh, and I, I don't want to take away any of the attention from it, um, but I will because I, I love this game too. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it, it's right on my uh, right behind it me. It is. <laughs> so, this is Aqualand. Uh, Cosmos has some, I think, the best two-player games. We're looking at uh, Targi, which is clearly one uh, that belongs in the top two-player games. This one is brand new, and I think it's going to uh, reach the same ranks. I have some pieces here. Now, if you if you like uh, chunky pieces, this one's got a ton of them. Uh, that's not. <laughs> nice. I need better lighting. I don't have it. Uh, but these are nice, thick. They they feel like Bakelite. Right? They're nice, heavy plastic, and they're all very colorful creatures, uh, sea creatures. It's a, it's a very simple, abstract two-player game. The, the, the page, uh, let's see, I mean, here's the rule book. Done. It's mostly pictures, and there's, there's very little to it um, because it's so simple. And uh, we're very excited to add that to our famous two-player line as well. Would you... Because you know, I I I I want to make sure people realize that like your two player line is has some huge titles to it, most notably over your shoulders, Lost Cities probably. Um, yes. But there are oh, some. Man. There you go. <laughs> um, but the other thing I want to make sure that we just sort of people recognize that also on your backdrop. This is very helpful, by the way, because they're all like right there. You just have to shift around. Um, is the Exit series, which you guys have been continuing to produce, like, a, is it three a year or six a year? You know, we were trying to like do a very consistent at first, but then they were so popular that we're just pumping them out as fast as we can now. So some yeah. years, first year we did six, then it was four three and then four again. Yeah, we got a bunch of them. 17 at the end of this year. Wow, wow, that's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, we're that's very a... happy with uh, those games. They, they're they super popular and we just get so much like fan response from it. I, I love it, yeah. <laughs> every, every time I go to a convention, because we have so many of them, I go to a convention mm -hmm. and inevitably we'll have just released one and I always feel like the bell at the ball. Like everyone's like lining up to buy the new exit game, which is funny because <laughs> everyone's already played the previous one, but they're also <laughs> unique and different that they're excited to, for the next one. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, I, uh, I was actually, I brought the um, Catacombs one on a cruise 
and had not one, not two, but three random people being like, oh my gosh, do you love board games? Because they saw <laughs> us and my husband's family just having it spread out on a table. I will admit that did get that one got a little interesting. No spoilers. Um, there is a candle included in the box, which you cannot have open flame on a boat. So we might have purloined with an electric candle from the restaurant. <laughs> I think that, that still worked. Did it, it still worked, right? It totally yeah, it totally worked. That's part of the reason why I wanted to share that story is if you happen to do the catacomb ones on electric candle, it totally works. So you just get to use one of the little tea lights, like electric tea right. light. Totally fine. Well, one, of the, one, of the, <laughs> one of the best stories, I, I read this on BGG. Someone was posting under the uh, catacombs forum that uh, they, they bought the game and they left it in their car on a hot day. Okay. Not knowing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's listed on the back, but you don't always look at the contents of a game when you right. buy it, right? <laughs> but they left it in the back of their car and the candle <laughs> melted. And so they had to replace it. Or maybe they used a, a light. I can't remember. But right. I, but I at least I like them a new candle. Oh, I mean, at least if it was, if they hadn't played it yet, I, you know, everything's in shrink. Like, I don't think any of the other things inside would have been ruined, but it might have made for a really interesting unboxing, though. <laughs> Yeah. At least not quite as exciting as like a, a can of biscuits exploding in your car, I suppose. Is, is that from experience? <laughs> uh, no, but that was a Mythbusters thing, and I'm a big personal fan of that show, so I think that's why yeah. it jumped in my mind. <laughs> well, Tom, in the last couple minutes we have left, is there anything? I mean, I know we, we obviously had you on the feed yesterday, um, but is there anything right. else you have from Cosmos that you can or are willing to share coming up soon? Uh, well, we have two new exit games <laughs> coming out uh, later this year, and to be honest, I I love the exit series game so so much. Uh, but I'm most excited about one of the new ones uh, because the storyline is so cool. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the like the grim fairy tales, mm -hmm. and and one of them that we're coming out with it 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 highlights those. It kind of messes with those stories and kind of combines them uh, almost in like a, uh, I don't know if anyone here reads like Unwritten, the, the comic series or anything like that. But like, if you if you like messing with fairy tales, it's good. I'm really excited <laughs> about that. My interest is peaked. <laughs> well, Tom, it's a delight as always, uh, whether we're in person or, or remote, it's always fun talking with you. Um, and I can't wait to see what else Cosmos is coming out for this year. Can't wait to get my hands on a copy of Target Expansion and sometime, hopefully, early 2021, new geek up set for Target as well. Yeah, and I'm super excited for that. Thank you for, for doing that. I, I'm a huge fan of the geek up bits, so thank you. Mm -hmm.